I want to go ahead and introduce myself and then I'm going to just let everyone go around uh, the Brady Bunch grid here and introduce themselves. And then I'm going to um, let Rebecca, Tara, and, um, you know, just kind of share a little bit about the performing arts. Chris is really good about, uh, it was his idea, I think, and maybe Rebecca's too, to pull off a specifically re relating to the performing arts, which was a great idea. So uh, my name is Tana Ambrose, and I invited Taylor and Samantha for you to be on campus this fall. Welcome aboard, and congratulations on your recent graduations. And Braden, thank you for being with us again. And um, I am the Director of College Access at Lincoln Trail, and that means a lot of different things. I love all the different things I get to do, but I wear many hats. And one of the things I do get to do is help students with onboarding. And so I haven't looked yet, but I do teach a couple of our freshman pathways to success courses. And so I don't know if either you, Taylor or Sam are in my class, but I'll look and see. And then just anything I can do to help students be successful when they're first coming on board to Lincoln Trail, I do that. So I've posted over in the chat, my email and my phone number. And if you have any questions between now and August 20th, you can text, call, email me anytime. And I'm serious about that, okay? So let me know if you have questions. But I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca, Tara, and Chris. Like I said, let them, and Braden, and let them introduce themselves. And then we would love for you two to introduce yourselves. Go ahead, Chris. All right, so I'm Chris. I am the uh, coordinator of marketing and public information at Lincoln Trail College. And uh, just recently, I was also named the director of marketing for Illinois Eastern Community Colleges. Uh, I have been with LTC for almost six years now. And uh, in addition to uh, my role doing marketing, um, I, I have also participated in the performing arts at Lincoln Trail College. I have uh, been in several plays, and uh, I have taken vocal lessons from both Rebecca and Tara, and I've also taken guitar lessons with us. Nice. Okay, I'll go next. I'm Rebecca Carmack, and I'm the Director of Music and Performing Arts Coordinator at Lincoln Trail, and I've met you, Taylor, multiple times, and Samantha, yes. we've been acquainted through email and um, your audition video. Um, and that's about it for now. I'll pass it on to Tara. I'm Tara Gallion. I am the um, director of theater and I teach intro to theater uh, in the fall. I'm doing an online and face-to-face -face option this fall. Um, acting one is in the spring and then I direct the fall play and the spring um, productions. I am Braden Hook, I'm from Martinsville. And uh, I just finished up my last year at Lincoln Trail this past spring. Awesome. And so we've been every two weeks throughout the summer getting together on these virtual panels. And each time we've done that, we've had a different theme, a different topic. And so that's why we're all here tonight is because early on in the summertime, when we realized that everything was going to be virtual, we wanted to stay connected to our students and just kind of keep these kinds of conversations happening, even though we couldn't be in person or with each other and students weren't going to be able to come to campus. And it's worked out really well. We've had some great conversations the last uh, you know, few times that we've gotten on to these panels. And so thank you so much, Braden, for being a panelist with us this evening. And um, it's really... A virtual panel discussion sounds formal, and we want this to be super conversational. So it is a conversation. And so Taylor and Samantha, this is a great time to get to know, uh, you know, your professors a little bit better, and Braden, who's been part of this program already for two years, and just to ask questions, maybe things you might be thinking about, because school starts soon. It's just around the corner. August 20th will be here before we know it. And so again, thanks for being on the call. And um, I would love for Rebecca, Tara, Braden, Chris, just talk a little bit about performing arts and theater and just all the different ways that students can get involved and what can students expect when they come to Lincoln Trail specifically. Okay. Um, I'll start um, with some of the things that we have in music. 
Um, I'm going to preface this by saying um, at this point, we're not 100% sure of what the fall is going to look like for performing arts. Um, we obviously want to give you all the most fulfilling experience in the performing arts. Um, but first and foremost, we have to, um, you know, we have to protect you and take your safety and health into, uh, into consideration. So we're going to make decisions based on primarily that and, and hopefully still giving you a, a wonderful and fulfilling um, experience. And I think most uh, colleges and universities and performing arts programs are, are kind of where we're at. We're, we're not a hundred percent sure. Um, but so I'm going to, I'm going to talk about what we typically would offer um, as far as music goes. Um, we have three choirs um, we have our statesman singers, which is our um, student group, which is I, I highly recommend um, any college student interested in singing in a choir to join that group. It's a great way to meet people, to make friends. Um, we also have our community choir, um, which meets at an evening time, if that works better for your schedule. And we have high school students, LTC students, uh, community members, um, retired band directors and, and choir directors in there. So it's a really cool group. Um, and then we have one auditioned choir um, <clears throat> called Camerata. So those are our choral groups. We also have a jazz band, uh, which meets in the evening. And we have a um, handbell ensemble, which was new last year, uh, which meets also in, in the evening, um, which I was a part of, and it was actually a lot of fun, helps strengthen your music reading skills um, if you're looking to do that. Um, but those are our ensemble options that we, that we typically have. Um, we also are currently offering voice lessons, piano lessons, um, guitar lessons, drum lessons, flute lessons. Um, and if you have another instrument that you're interested in, let me know and we'll, we'll see if we can um, find an instructor for that instrument. Um, I also teach um, music theory um, and we have a beginning music theory class and then we have um, a track of four semesters of theory that if you are wanting to be a music major, you'll be a part of uh, that theory track. Um, and then I also teach um, music appreciation and, and the fine arts, um, core fine arts classes. Um, and I'm also co-teaching um, a Pathways uh, section. So that's um, new and exciting. Um, I'm teaching that with Jay Regenetter, who has taught it before but couldn't teach on Thursdays. So he's going to teach Tuesdays and I'm going to teach Thursdays and we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, what else do I need to say about the, about the music department? Maybe I will, um, pass it on to Tara for now to give kind of like a, a basic, um, idea of what we do in the theater department. Sure. Um, so like I said, I teach intro to theater. That is a humanities course that is, um, basically introducing you to all aspects of theater, not just the onstage options. A lot of people think, oh, theater is when people are on stage and they have to memorize lines. This class is not necessarily for people who want to perform. It's just for people to familiarize themselves with the different ways that people can get involved in theater. So we do uh, a unit on um, hair and makeup, which is a fun one. Um, we do some gender bender makeup and we do um, elderly makeup on ourselves. Uh, and we do, um, like cuts, scars, bruises, abrasions. So, um, just kind of some interesting ways to see how they use those things in the theater. Um, and then we talk about lighting design and set design and costume design. Um, you open your own, uh, pretend theater and you make decisions um, about starting your own theater business uh, just so you can kind of learn the things that you would have to consider or that people do consider when they're in the theater. So that's the intro to theater class. Um, in the spring, just last spring was our first time offering acting one. So that's the onstage part of theater. Um, we were scheduled to do a uh, murder mystery dinner theater at LTC before COVID shut down uh, the school. And um, that would be the final project for that group is pre performing um, in that murder mystery. 
Um, so then I offer the production in the fall and the production in the spring. Uh, and that's open to anybody who wants to perform. I don't know if you knew that we were one week away from opening Matilda the musical uh, and then COVID came. So we bumped Matilda back to the summer and then COVID, COVID stayed and we bumped Matilda back to the fall and then COVID stayed. And so right now the plan is to perform Matilda in the spring of 2021. Um, and since we've had to, you know, we've had some, some college students move on from LTC, we are going to have to recast some of those spots. So just because you weren't originally cast in the production, there will be spots open for that. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely keep your eyes and ears open for that. Um, I teach voice and piano, beginning piano also. And one thing I'm really excited about is um, starting play readings. Um, we're gonna do a series of play readings, one each month um, that all have to do with a common theme. So this year or this fall, our theme's going to be race and prejudice. And we're just going to read a play each month that has that as the theme, just to kind of explore some uh, titles without having to stage the full production and memorize lines. Um, so I'm really excited about um, bringing that into our theater mix. That's it. Awesome. Chris, are we going to be offering the improv class or talk a little bit about that? That's a fun extra type of class that we offer. Right, so um, one of the things I didn't mention is uh, I teach improv, uh, so if you've, ever watched uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway? We play very similar games to that. Now the class that I teach is a non-credit class. So um, it, it's kind of just one of those, you do this for fun kind of things. And uh, it, it's a blast. Uh, Tara has been through the class and has graciously invited me to her class before to work with students on improv. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, one of the things I really like about that is it, it gives you confidence that, uh, you know, I hear so much, well, I can't do that. People can't, you know, it, it's hard for me to think fast. And it, it's really not so much that it's sort of about going with the flow. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, that definitely um, I would encourage you to do that. It will be an evening uh, sort of deal. Uh, I don't know if I will do it in the fall or the spring. A lot is going to depend on on what's going on. I try to uh, keep that away from whatever performances are happening because we have a lot of people in the class that are also in the different performances. And I like to be able to use the theater for the class as well. So try not to, to overlap too much. Uh, I've actually been doing some online improv this summer. And uh, last week, actually through a conference, I got lucky enough to play a game with uh, the crew from Second City in Chicago, which was like super dope and so much fun. <laughs> awesome. That's really fun. Brayden, you're the student on the call. Tell us what it's been like to be a student through the eyes of a student and participating in all the different things that you've done. Share what you've done and what your journey has been and what maybe you would, uh, you know, advice you would give or tips to Samantha and Taylor. Well, I, uh, so like I did like, I didn't do choir my first semester, but then uh, Rebecca kept kind of working on me and finally I caved and went ahead and did it. And you know, I think I would have really regretted if I hadn't done that because I met a lot of amazing people and a lot of, I still, a lot of them I still talk to to this day. Um, and I did, I did music, piano lessons. I did vocal lessons. I did guitar lessons for a year. So like, even if they, you know, they don't have necessarily the instrument that you want to play for lessons, it's still a good idea to go try something new, you know, cause I had, I had never taken voice lessons. And so I ended up switching from guitar lessons to vocal lessons. And I think that that was probably a really good, I really good choice on my part. <laughs> but, um, other than that, like it, you know, if you, I, I last zoom call I was in, I mentioned this. Um, if you 
are the kind of person that has trouble making friends or like if you want a surefire way to make friends even joining a choir or doing one of the productions which that's also something i did too doing one of those things is a good way to meet a lot of amazing people and to make a lot of amazing friendships during your college career so definitely I would like to kind of piggyback off of what he's saying. He's being modest. He <laughs> did pretty much everything that we offered in the performing arts department. Um, he is transferring as a music major to Eastern um, and was also an ensemble um, tuition recipient. Um, so he took the full track of theory and um, yeah, voice lessons was a was a great uh, a great move. But you kind of tried different things. He actually is you're a euphonium player, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so <laughs> he did jazz band. He did um, choir. He did the shows. Um, you took some of the theater classes too, I think, um, and did a wonderful wonderful job. <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious, what was your What's one of the things that stands out to you the most out of taking all of those classes, all of those um, ensembles, the show? What was what's one of your favorite memories? Um, oh gosh, there's a lot. I think from the from the show is one of my favorite memories was probably the pickup rehearsal that okay. we had for Clue. That one, it got it got pretty funny. <laughs> it was it was it was a blast. Um, and I I can't think of a specific moment for like all of like the like ensemble related and stuff, but like I just picked up like a lot of I guess performance skills. Like it, it I back in high school I was I mean I did musicals and stuff and I did like band and stuff like that, but like I was still really nervous really? about getting on stage, even though I don't I don't show it a lot, but it's still like you know. But like doing all that stuff, doing jazz band, choirs, the shows, like that really helped me learn some like real valuable skills that I will use in my, like not even just music related life. Like you can use that stuff in everyday life. So, so. And, and if I could kind of uh, add on to that a little bit, uh, my story in, in all of this, I was very late to the performing arts. Um, I, when I was really young, I thought, oh, I'd love to be an actor. And then, uh, you know, then it probably changed to something else and all that. And never really pursued it. You know, it always kind of watched from the sidelines and thought this would be super cool to do and never really could. And uh, so in, in 2018, I, I took the plunge and uh, tried out for AIDA and, and got uh, a, a pretty small part in that, but it was my first opportunity to be on stage. I'd had uh, some voiceover parts in a couple of uh, plays before that, and it was really fun. And then by summer, I got, I went from three lines in Aida to like 220 lines as the lead in the Brothers Grimm Spectaculathon, and uh, it was mildly terrifying. <laughs> but, uh, also in, in 2018, um, one of the other things that I did is I signed up for vocal lessons for the first time. And uh, I took those with Rebecca and she would absolutely agree wholeheartedly when I came in there. I was a nervous wreck. Uh, I was really uh, not comfortable with that. It was far, far outside of my comfort zone. But it was something that I decided that I wanted to do to try and grow as a person, grow confidence, and, you know, got through the first semester, did another semester, and then the third semester I took vocal lessons, um, I, I did them with, with Tara, and uh, when I did the jury, I, I kind of went uh, a little wild with, with what I did in the jury. Not really sure, you know, wasn't sure how that was going to go. Uh, it was more of a performance, I would say, than probably a, a true uh, jury type piece. But, you know, I remember Rebecca on the, the comments um, you talked about, you know, just seeing the, the growth from where I was at the beginning to then. And that's one of the things that I've really liked about getting involved in performing arts is the the way confidence grows and it's also such a welcoming community everyone is so encouraging uh you know never have i had anybody 
you know, be critical of what I'm doing or anything like that. So, uh, you know, that, that's great. I love that. Um, I, I haven't been able to have the opportunity to be involved in anything since last summer and I miss it. Uh, yeah, I look forward to getting another chance to get out there and, you know, Braden, you touched on this a lot when we had you on the first time, uh, and you've touched on it tonight too, the, the camaraderie that you build up backstage with the people that you perform with is something that is so, so amazing. Um, you know, I'm, uh, I was the second oldest person in the cast of Puffs when we did that last summer. And I was really worried with, you know, okay, how am I going to fit in with, uh, you know, a group of people that are literally half my age. And I mean, it was great. We had such a good time with, with all of that. We, we still uh, talk about that show to this day and, and what we did. And, uh, you know, that's fun. You know, you make such great connections. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. I would say if you uh, want, it, it's absolutely true that if you want to get connected, I promise you, if you come to performing arts, you will find somebody that you gel with really well. Um, I really do believe that LTC Performing Arts is one of the most accepting places in the entire county. I really believe that. Um, so we've got all kinds of people that come together and work on something that they could never replicate on their own, whether that be um, choirs or a performance. Um, but it is an awesome place to be and you will find people uh, who fit, who you feel like you fit in with and make some really great friends there. Awesome. Taylor and Samantha, if you don't mind, and we'll start with Taylor. Can you just kind of tell us a little bit about you, maybe things that you've been involved in? I mean, obviously you're both coming to Lincoln Trail on Ensemble Scholarship, so congratulations. And Braden, you are part of that program too, right? Yeah. And what a great way to help get your education paid for by singing and performing your way through the first two years of college, right? So congratulations on that. And, um, but if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourselves and things that, like I said, that you've been involved in and help us get to know you a little bit better. Taylor, you um, yeah, uh, my, oh yeah, um, my um, name's Taylor. Um, I'm from KZ Westfield. Um, I've been in a few shows. I started doing musicals when I was in eighth grade. Um, I was in the ensemble for Mary Poppins, um, Cinderella. I was, uh, Aunt Mark in Little Women. I was Maisie in um susical and my senior year i was the lead in a music musical called hello my baby i've done um solo and ensemble since i was in junior high i've been in the community um the community shows far off broadway i've done um oklahoma and wizard of oz um it's about it that's a and lot i've been to all is that all local, right in and around the KZ area? Yes. Yes. And I've also been in band, and I was also a drummer for three. Wonderful. Well, there you go, Rebecca and Tara. <laughs> Lynn decided she'd like to, to chat about oh. performing arts, too. <laughs> I love it. Samantha, how about you? Um... Well, I'm Samantha Parker. I'm from Martinsville, so I know Braden pretty well. Um, I've been in band since I was fifth grade. I play the flute, and two years ago, I started playing the piccolo. Um, I've been in the musicals since eighth grade, um, and this year, I was actually going to be the lead, but then the COVID thing happened, and so we didn't actually get to, you know, perform it, so... Singing my song. Oh no! What musical so, were you going to do? What was the role? Um. Well, it was totally awesome eighties, and I was going to be Brenda. It's uh not really very known, but I was pretty excited about it. So it sounds fun. I'm from the eighties. That sounds it's awesome. Really rad. I think is what we really want to say. <laughs> Chris loves the eighties. I do. That would be one I would enjoy, I'm sure. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but that was definitely the case for a lot of people. And so um, you're both 
extremely experienced then when it comes to all the things that we've already talked about. Um, Brayden, let me ask you a question. A lot of students ask me, you know, if they come to Lincoln Trail and they get involved in music and performing arts and theater, where can they go with that or what can they do? Where do you see yourself in five years? Are you going to be, is this going to be part of what you're doing after you graduate from Eastern? Uh, after I graduate, I'm hoping to quickly find a job that it's where I could be like a high school music teacher, band director, you know. Okay. So you're doing education, music education yeah. at Eastern. Wonderful. Yep. Wow. Okay. That's exciting. Um, well, Taylor, Samantha, do you have any questions? Just maybe things you've thought about or I don't know. It doesn't even have to be about musical theater and different things like that. It can be anything about Lincoln Trail, but any questions that have been running through your mind as you get ready to kind of make the jump from high school into college? No, do you both have your schedules all made out already? Have you met with an advisor and have your schedules? Yes. Well, um, I'm supposed to talk to my advisor about my schedule because we already made up my schedule and then I'm supposed to add, add some things onto it. So I've <laughs> met up with her, but yeah. Awesome. I think they'll all, well, they'll add on who their instruct, assigned instructor will be. So they don't have that nailed down yet necessarily. Okay. Um, and then if you're going to participate in a show that is a later sign up when, after you do the audition and then you see if you make it into the cast, then, um, that will register for that later. I will say, um, LTC students always will get some kind of role. Um, we make it a priority to make sure that LTC students, if they audition pretty much always have a spot if they want to be involved. Um, so when we say, see if you make the cast, <laughs> we like seeing our own college students on the stage. So there's a great likelihood that you will be included in that if that's uh, something you want to pursue. Great. So Tana, can I ask a, a question to Rebecca and Tara? Um, this is, you know, obviously we've got, you know, a couple of students with us tonight that are are very interested in, and are going to be involved in the performing arts, but uh, for somebody that uh, is not necessarily uh, going to be, you know, an ensemble scholarship person or something like that, are the performing arts open to any of the students at Lincoln Trail College, or do I have to be a music major or a performance major or something like that in order to participate? Great question. Yeah, I was going to touch on that. Um, obviously, Taylor and Samantha are going to be involved um, through their ensemble uh, tuition waiver and a lot of different things. But no, you do not have to be a performance major of any kind. You do not have to be a, a tuition, an ensemble tuition waiver recipient. Um, these are open to all LTC students. If you have zero musical skills, um, I always suggest starting with a lesson. A voice lesson or a piano lesson is awesome to help you start reading music, getting those fundamentals down. Um, and usually what happens if we have beginners like that, then they, their interest grows, their confidence grows, and then they want to move into an ensemble. Um, they might want to take a theory class to learn how to read music a little bit better. Um, then they might get even more confidence and then they want to try out for one of the shows. Um, but I think a private lesson is a great way to start. You can also, um, our ensembles, it kind of depends. My community choir is a great place to start um, singing in an ensemble. Um, statesman singers, I usually just ask that you have some sort of singing experience, whether that's choir in eighth grade or whatever. Um, I just want you to have a little bit of, of experience um, and then, of course, the audition group is is for um, probably someone with a little bit more experience. Our jazz band, um, you're kind of expected to be able to read music and play an instrument already. Um, Handbells, um, the, the instrument is very unique, but you do need to know how to read like basic rhythms, I would say, and basic, um, basic notes. Um, but I do want to make a point about the, the private lessons. They are worth um, one credit and you meet one time a week um, with your instructor. It's a one-on-one -on -one lesson for 30 minutes. 
um, which is, a, again, a great way to get started. It's just you and your instructor. Um, it's very low pressure. You're graded on your progress from where you start to where you finish in the semester. Um, and it it's counted as college credit, which is awesome. So if you're looking to learn a new skill, it's a great, it's a great thing to do while you're in college. Um, I'll piggyback off of that. Our uh, productions are also credit. And I didn't mention, um, typically, in addition to having the cast portion of the production, we have the crew portion of production as well. So if you're a part of the cast, that's a three credit hour class. If you're a part of the crew, which is the people who are doing costumes and makeup and um, sometimes the set painting, um, people who move props and set pieces on and off of the stage, basically our backstage crew. Um, that's a two credit hour class. Um, so uh, two college credits or three college credits for having fun being in a production with our theater community. It's a pretty good deal. I think so too. Good. And then Tana, you had said something about um, how is Brayden going to use what he gained through the program in the future. Um, I've heard a lot of people just say, you know, they're not professional actors, um, but they use the skills that they have learned about presenting in front of an audience or presenting in front of a uh, group of people, even people who work at Marathon. They've built those skills to feel confident and comfortable um, presenting something through theater. And so now they're able to take that into their workplace, into their environment and um, feel good about what they're able to do in front of a group of people. I totally agree. I believe, I believe wholeheartedly in that. And I love, I've seen students go into classes like that and be pretty shy and come out being wonderful public speakers. So it, it is a great class for a lot of different takeaways for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Taylor or Samantha, anything else? Um, what about orientation? Do we know anything about that? Yeah, we do. I actually am facilitating those orientations. In the past, they've been on campus in person, of course, and we usually do have done all of the students kind of in one day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we go over everything that we think students need to know to be successful and to get started on the right foot at Lincoln Trail. Because of COVID, those are all going to be online. And there'll be two hours, we'll be Zoom, just like this. So Samantha, you're good to go now because you've used Zoom after tonight. Um, Taylor and Samantha, those should have been times, days and times that you chose that you signed up with your advisor for. And if you haven't done that, that's okay. You can call your advisor, either Aaron or Jamie probably. And they'll tell you all the different days and times you have to choose from and you'll select a day and time, and you'll do exactly what we're doing right now. You'll hop on a Zoom, and we will go over a lot of different pieces of information. And in addition to the Zoom call, you'll be asked to go on to your computer and go in through Entrada, that's our computer system that we use at Lincoln Trail, and then log into Canvas. Canvas is what we call our learning management system. I'll go over all of this in orientation, it's really easy. And there will be a couple of tasks within the Canvas module that you'll have to complete also. And that's how we're doing orientation this year. So that's a great question. It's really different than anything we've ever done before. Okay, but I thank you. I know that students will do just fine. And so we'll just like we're doing right now, we'll explain everything and I'll have the ability to share my screen. So you'll see things on my screen while you're watching and uh, be able to ask questions. We'll have about 20 to 25 students in each of our online orientation sessions. So it'll be like this, just with a few extra people, all students, a couple of other faculty and staff probably will be joining us. And we'll just talk about everything you need to know and answer your questions. Yeah, good question. Have, do you know, have you signed up for it? Not yet. Okay. Samantha, how about you? Um, I've been meaning to talk to Jamie about it, but every time she's called me, I've been at work. Okay. So. They, the sessions start August 6th, and we have, oh. there are 12 or 13 different options starting August 6th and going through August 19th. 
So just make sure you get a hold of your advisor and pick a day and a time and get signed up for that session. And then you'll start receiving information about the details. You'll get an email just like today. It will have the Zoom link in there and just hop on the, the Zoom call at the day and time that you pick. So that's it. But thanks for asking about that. Anything else? Are classes going to be online or in person? Did you say our classes going to be? Yeah. As of right now, we are planning to be on campus in the fall. And so we are, we will probably be spacing students out a little bit farther and only having a max capacity of, you know, X number of students in each classroom. But right now we are definitely planning to be on campus starting the first day of school at August 20th. And Rebecca, are you teaching any online sections this fall? Um, I'm teaching online um, history of American music. Okay. Um, I teach that every semester. This summer, I'm teaching a new class called Multicultural Music in America, which I've had a blast teaching. But I think that one is going to be either hybrid or face-to-face, -face, um, even though it's online this summer. So. And then we'll have face-to-face -face and online. You can pick one or the other for intro to theater. I'm also trying to keep my fall play at 10 people or under so that in the event that we do move backwards to phase three, we would still be able to meet without having to make extreme adjustments. Mm -hmm. Great question, Samantha. We all ask those questions every day. <laughs> we are all crossing our fingers that we are fully functional and face to face after August 20th, for sure. I miss seeing all the students, so I'm ready to be back in school regular school. Good. Brayden, thank you so much for joining us again tonight. Always appreciate your insight and just you being here. Good luck at Eastern. We'll be keeping an eye on you and following you and all the wonderful things I know you're going to do when you, when you go there. And um, again, Taylor and Samantha, you can call anytime, ask questions through email, text call. And Rebecca, Tara, thank you so much for being on here. Chris, as he's, Chris has been on every single call all summer. So thank you so much. And we will post this. It will be available for other students to watch and listen should they want to find out what we talked about tonight. And I look forward to seeing both of you on campus in August. And I'll see you, I guess, on an online orientation prior to that. But thank you all for being with us and have a great rest of the summer. And I will hopefully see all of you on August 20th on campus. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.